Hello. Uh, so the BAFTAs happened. Um, and um, Gary Oldman won. He won Best Actor. Um, I was happy to see that. Um, but Dunkirk didn't really win. It won Best... Um, <clears throat> it won Best Sound. Uh, I could check. No. Baptas. Baptas. No, come on. Here's the list of them. Okay, here. Dunker, uh, Dunker, Dunker. It won something. Yeah, best sound. Okay, I wasn't entirely uh, out of my mind. But the big uh, winner actually was uh, five billboards with five wins, including best uh, film, as well as best British film. Though I believe, I thought it was filmed in America. Uh, hold on. Three billboards outside of Eddie, Missouri. Um, where was it filmed at? Um, yeah, in North Carolina. It was filmed in North Carolina. Uh, I believe it was. So yeah, it was essentially made here, but I guess because the guy who made it is British. That makes it a British film. I mean, I didn't see anything that was necessarily um, seen. I didn't see anything that said otherwise. Like it, it, it won, or it was nominated, filmed. Sorry, could be nominating, winning because of the BAFTAs, but it didn't really. I didn't see anything just now. Just glancing at the production. Didn't say anything that being made here or financed there. Well, I guess it could have been financed by British people as well, but you know. But um, Guillermo del Toro won uh, director. Um, Nolan lost again. It also won the original score, Shape of Water did, as well as production design. And that was it. Oh, wait. Yeah, that was it. Um, so, yeah, you, you guys know, been watching me lately about these award shows. You know, I want Dunkirk to win. And I also would like to see Darkest Hour win a good portion of awards, though I think for Dunkirk, Best Actor and uh, um, Makeup is a lock for the Academy Awards that are coming in two weeks. Uh, I would like to see Dunkirk win Best Picture and Director, because the direction in that film is so amazing and so so much like unlike anything I've seen in quite some time. Um, you know, Nolan does his best of going above and beyond, honestly, with every movie he makes. And um, he himself said that, you know, he couldn't have made this movie until now because he, he wanted to make it back in the 90s, but he didn't have the money or the resources to do so. Uh, he... Uh, so he made many movies, and since Insomnia, all of his films have really been released through uh, Warner Brothers. And um, the trust they have for him in making movies is, is r rare to see nowadays, you know, a, f a full-blown studio. Letting a director have complete creative control 
love them coming in at any point and just letting him do whatever. Um, that really essentially started with Batman Begins and his work on the Batman films. Um, and as he grew as a filmmaker, uh, they just let him do his thing. They stay out of his way and do whatever. Um, I would wish they would do that for many of the other films that uh, they release, as well as uh, other studios. Let directors do their thing. Um, because studio people really don't know how movies work. Uh, I can't think of a head of a major studio that um, has ever really made a film. Exactly. Um, or at least none come to mind, I will say that. Um, Warner Brothers, Fox, Disney, you know, the heads of these companies never worked on a movie. Um, at least not as far as my knowledge is. Um, I mean, I could be wrong, and maybe one of those three companies, us, the head of one of those three companies, like one of them at least, uh, has been involved in film in some way before they got promoted being the head of it. But, you know, Warner Brothers' trust for Nolan is, like, rare to see. Um, now, as... Now, I have not seen most of the films nominated, honestly. Um, I haven't seen Call Me By Your Name. I haven't seen Get Out, Lady Bird, uh, Phantom Thread, The Post, The Shape of Water, Three Billboards. The Shape of Water seems to be the movie that is winning all these movies, or all these awards. Good for the BAFTAs, it didn't really win as much as you, you would have thought uh, compared to all the other award shows. Again, though, the guy who made three Bill Awards was British. Well, for, for Dunkirk, you, I would have thought... Out of all the award shows, you know, and all the guilds and stuff over here in America, I actually thought, you know, Dunkirk perhaps would have its best chance at the BAFTAs. Apparently, I was wrong in that thinking. Um, I, I, you know, I wish, uh, um... Kristen Scott Thomas was nominated for Supporting Actress in Darkest Hour. She got nominated for a BAFTA. Would have liked to have seen her win, but Allison Jenny, I thought, was going to win. But, you know, you have hope that somehow someone like Thomas, who hasn't been really nominated for any other award that's major, except for the BAFTA, yeah, hold out hope that she could pull off a win, but alas, she did not. Um, but again, I wasn't that surprised. Um, so, but you know, Allison Jenny, from what I've heard, is fantastic, um, very deserving of the Oscar or the award she's won, and quite possibly the deserving of the Oscar she could win for. Uh, I, Tanya, as well as Sam Rockwell and Francis McDormand for Three Billboards. Um, and Gary Oldman is deserving of Darkest Hour. He deserves to win. He should have won many times already. This should have been like his fourth, fifth Oscar win. You know, he should already be an Academy Award winner. This should be his most recent win. I know many people say Daniel Day-Lewis deserves to win. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that he's retiring. Um, again, I've not seen his performance. Uh, he's a very good actor. Uh, I thought, I've often enjoyed uh, watching his performances in films like There Will Be Blood and um, My Left Foot. Um, though with My Left Foot, that's like the only film to me, at least, that I saw him disappear. You know? I know he didn't have any kind of 
interesting looks to him. He pretty much looked like himself. Um, but it was just the way he portrayed himself and how he was like like this the entire time and really and he was able to learn to write and all that was his, his foot and you know that that's just amazing to me um, uh, and that he was very deserving of that Oscar um, you know for Lincoln I wanted to see Hugh Jackman win for Les Miserables um, that's just me. I would have liked to have seen someone else win for uh, over him and There Will Be Blood. There Will Be Blood was very good. Um, he was amazing in that film, but, you know, Johnny Depp and Sweeney Todd, it was like something, I, uh, it was a, such a different kind of role for him to take on, uh, especially during at the height that you could say of the Pirates films where pretty much everybody just saw him as just Jack Sparrow and nothing else really um, for that time uh, during the middle of all that uh, and then becomes Sweeney Todd is completely different uh, but, uh, George Clooney as, and Michael Clayton was really good and Viggo Mortensen and Eastern Promises was also good. Um, but, you know, you could debate all that overall, but uh, My Left Foot, well-deserving the Oscar. And I think for uh, Phantom Thread, a lot of it has to do with, oh, you know, it's his last movie. Let's give him a fourth Academy Award. No, don't give him a fourth Academy Award. Um, essentially on the basis of his of it being his last film. This might not be his last movie, you know. He said he's retired or flirted with retirement or something like that before. And something always drags him out of retirement and makes him get back into acting. Um, Gary Oldman is given performances Oscar worthy over the years. Uh, even as far back as Sid Vicious. And Sid and Nancy. From that on, on for the, moment, the fact that he his first Academy Award nomination was for Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, which was very deserved, by the way. Uh, I believe, and I think he actually should have won the Oscar that year. Um, but the fact that his first nomination was uh, six years ago is actually pretty sad. When you look at the countless performances he has given over the course of his 30 plus career, and he is just now, within this decade, been recognized by the Academy, which is supposed to be this huge uh, organization of recognizing the best, uh, not necessarily just giving the award to the best, but nominating people who are the best. And he has been one of the best forever, as long as he's acted, honestly. Yeah, he's done some films that are bad, but I've never seen a bad performance from Gary Oldman. Um, you know. And uh, I, I feel that, uh, you know, he, he won uh, two BAFTAs for the film Kneel by Mouth that he directed and wrote. He won for a screenplay and best British film. And um, so the BAFTAs gave him a couple of awards uh, 20 years ago, actually. Cause the film came out in 97, and he got the awards in 98. Sorry for bumping this. But yeah, I mean, so the British ones, the British uh, awards were have recognized him more than the Academy Awards have. Um, yeah, he got recognized uh, uh, for the uh, 
for Tinker Taylor, but uh, again, he lost. Um, which, you know, I, I believe he's like the best actor ever, honestly, in terms of actors go. He's the best, you know, I he's a chameleon. You don't see Gary Oldman. You don't necessarily hear, you don't really hear Gary Oldman. You hear and see that character. And sometimes when he looks and sounds exactly like himself, uh, it, it, for me at least, it takes me a while because, you know, you get used to him being made, made up to look different, whether it be prosthetics makeup or perhaps just longer hair or facial hair or with an, and or with an accent. You know, you just get used to him just not looking and or sounding like himself. So when he is looking and sounding like himself, it takes you a minute. To realize who that is, um, and uh, while um, you know, for like uh, the big awards for uh, the Baftas and the Oscars, uh, the Shape of Water doesn't entirely uh, interest me really. Um, it, it it's. Like the creature from the Black Lagoon falls in love with the woman, or a woman falls in love with the creature from the Black Lagoon. It's a it's a fish man, you know, gill man creature, uh, and uh, essentially and they fall in love. And though if you ever see all the creature from the Black Lagoon, the creature fell in love with the woman, but the woman didn't. Uh, share the same feelings towards uh, the creature. Though from what I've heard and all that about The Shape of Water, it, 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 the film, uh, you know, the, cre the fish creature and the woman just, like, they love each other. The woman's deaf and they communicate with the sign language. And they're both outsiders or something. And I'm like, you know, I don't know, the premise doesn't really sound all that interesting to me, quite frankly. Um, I could be alone in that. Uh, that, that could be very, uh, that could be the case. Um, so, I, 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 I don't know, just, it, it doesn't, sound all that great to me. I didn't really hear about it until um, the Golden Globes won all those awards. And I, I don't know, uh, you know, three billboards could win Best Picture. Uh, I don't know. You know, but I, I am hoping that the, 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 that Dunkirk and Christopher Nolan could potentially, you know, get the top prize at the Academy Awards. Since they didn't get much love at the, uh, BAFTAs, you know, I would like to see Dunkirk win Best Picture, Director, score, <clears throat> original score, it's sound editing and mixing, uh, production design between Dar Darkest Hour and Dunkirk for me, um, so best picture director, score, sound, and editing and mixing. Like it to see best editing as well. Um, in cinematography, I would like it to win cinematography. That'd be like the seventh award. Could lose one. Could lose production design. To Darkest Hour. Though cinematography, people have been talking about like Roger Deakins for Blade Runner. Um, Roger Deakins has been nominated a lot. 
and has not won. Um, it was good cinematography, it looked gorgeous. But then at, so did D Darkest Hour and Dunkirk. So to me, it could w go through 103 of those. So even if it doesn't win 7, it could win 6. Um, Darkest Hour could potentially win sound design or production design. Uh, hair and makeup as well as best actor so it could win three Oscars Dunker could win uh, six maybe a seventh I would like it if it won all eight Oscars but you know that, that it rarely happens that a film wins all of the Oscars it's nominated for Hence why I'm like, you know, I could see this film beating Dunkirk or this film. But I would just like to, to see uh, Darkest or Dunkirk uh, surprise people and win, like, big. Also, they, the Academy, you know, has snubbed Nolan for a long time. They haven't... This is the first time he's ever been nominated for an Academy Award for Best Director. He was nominated for Screenplay twice, for first for Memento and then for Inception. And he was nominated for Best Picture for Inception, but not Director. So the film he got nominated for Best Picture for, you'd think, nominated for, for Directing, too. No. And people think for, like, The Dark Knight, he should have been nominated for Director and Best Picture. And I think even for... Dark Knight Rises, he should have been nominated for Best Picture and Director. Um, you know, there'll be people that would disagree with me there, but I've already said I love that film. I enjoyed it. I thought it was, I think it was worthy of, at the very least, a nomination of those sorts of that, at the Oscars and other awards at that ceremony. Um, if it did, yeah, I'd like it to have won as many as it could have, uh, particularly any and all big awards, but that didn't happen, so, you know, uh, that is what it, that is, um, don't have to love it, but hey, so, final voting will commence Tuesday, and then next, uh, Tuesday, the polls close, the final polls close, I think they're voting one more time, and then this is final, so, the Academy does have a tendency of giving people their dues, you could even look at if Dunkirk got Best Picture and Director, or at least Director, because some say, because of some of the movies, that could be the best chance of a big award, uh, of it receiving a big award as director. You know, obviously I'd like it to win Best Picture as well, but, you know, hey, you know, no one wins, wins quite big and great. Um, the Academy could possibly give him the Oscar as well, not just the nomination, because, you know, this, He's nominated. He's now nominated for five times. Um, I know Paul Thomas Anderson's like nominated. Like this is in total, he's nominated for six times. Or well, wait, whoa, eight Academy Awards over the course of his career. Okay, first off, look, it's Boogie Nights, Academy Award for Original Screenplay, yeah, Magnolia. Uh, Academy Award for Original Screenplay is two. This uh, picture, director, and adapted screenplay for There Will Be Blood. Uh, adapted screenplay for Inherent Vice. Academy Award for Director and Picture. No. Guess he was nominated eight times. Um, 
Mm. Well, though Anderson has been nominated quite a bit, I think he will get an Academy Award someday. Um, whether it will be the Phantom Threat or not, I don't know. Um, uh, they could give it to no one because, you know, he's given such spectacle films over the years, and this is the first time ever of uh, giving him the honor of a nomination for directing. So I don't know. Bill Guillermo del Toro, you know, he could get it. Again, I haven't seen the film, but again, I don't know. I, I mean, I've seen Pan's Labyrinth. I thought that was a decent, a good film. Um, But, you know, I don't know. That film, The Shape of Water, just seems fairly overrated at the moment to me. You know, maybe when I see it, I can understand where it comes from or why people like it. Um, though if I don't like it, I probably won't talk about it here. Because um, I try to do my best in giving positive thoughts on movies. And while I have said some things that aren't positive about some of the new Star Wars films. You know, that, that, it comes because I love Star Wars. I love the first six Star Wars and I'm not entirely fond of the direction the Star Wars films are going. Um, that's just me. I mean, and I've even said, you know, if you like the films, you can like the films. You know, that's just my opinion. Um, and, you know, hey, we all have opinions, don't have to agree all the time, but, uh, you know, those are really the only instances of me talking about films I don't really like in fairly good depth. Um, outside of that, uh, I've mentioned like films like Annie Hall, I wasn't really fond of, but I really went into more detail other than I was bored, and I didn't find it humorous. And I don't know, I don't want to be a channel on here that's just like, oh, this movie just sucked, or that was boring, because blank, 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 I, I don't want to do that. Um, if I don't like The Shape of Water and I see it, like, uh, I'd probably get it on Blu-ray or DVD or whatever. Um, you know, just for the special features, it could be interesting to see how the film was made, honestly. It could be interesting to me, from a filmmaking standpoint stuff like that's interesting to me. So even if I don't really watch the movie itself overall, like or like over and over after like an initial viewing, I if it's the documentaries that would might accompany the film, you know, hey, I mean I got something out of it. I got some sort of enjoyment out of it. Um, if it is just the making of it, that's something. Um Again, for like I, Tanya, um, Three Billboards, uh, Lady Bird, um, you know, I may watch those as well when they come out, uh, and Phantom Thread. Um, yeah, I haven't seen Get Out, honestly. Um, it's been out for quite some time, but I don't know, I just, I guess other movies come out, and when I see it, it's like I really want this movie, or the app movie, or two and I don't get that, from, I don't know why, I just haven't gotten it. Um, I probably will someday and see it, uh, but... Yeah, Darkest Hour and uh, Dunkirk won something at the BAFTAs. I, the wins I thought would win for Darkest Hour at one. I hoped, you know, aside from some a technical aspect, which Dunkirk did win for Best Sound, I hoped they would, it would be able to win big, since it's a British film. Yes, it has an American budget, and they filmed in some other places, and the U.S. Coast Guard helped out. And they filmed, like, part of the sinking ships and stuff like that. They had, like, a tank room and filled up a tank and made it and filled it with water and all that. In Hollywood, uh, but 
I, I, you know, I just hoped because the film is a World War II movie about an event that happened that Britain was huge and I hoped it would win, at least with the British, but I don't know. It didn't win, but I think in all honesty, uh, if it doesn't win at the Academy Awards this coming two weeks, as history has shown with people enjoying and loving the works of Christopher Nolan, I think people will look back very fondly on Dunkirk very much. So, But hey, uh, that's me being very optimistic. I enjoyed the film. Glad for Oldman. Glad he's getting the dues he deserves, finally, after all these years, all these awards. He deserved them a lot more over his 30-plus career, honestly, but I guess better late than never, you know. And if Christopher Nolan happens to lose at the Academy Awards, um, I think he will get an Academy Award. If not two, he'll get at least one Oscar in his career, I believe that. And not just like an honorary Oscar for his body of work. Even if it's like, we're sorry we didn't give this to you earlier, and you should have. And quite possibly, he'll pro he could quite possibly deserve it for whatever film he may actually win, if it's not for Dunkirk. But it could also be seen as well as a makeup Oscar for not getting it sooner. And if he does win for Dunkirk, some might see it as that. Oh, he's only getting this because he, he didn't win uh, before, and he was never nominated for director before, and this is just all a makeup for that. And whatever. He, he, Christopher Nolan's a uh, filmmaker that deserves an Academy Award, because the Academy Awards are supposed to be for the best. Right? It's supposed to be the best for the, in the medium of film. All the award shows lead up to the Academy Awards because the Oscars are supposed to be the gold standard, essentially. Um, but the Oscars do make some decisions for whether it be political and or social commentary in movies. And when you look at it, and you look at some of the other films nominated, or could have been nominated, you know, you're like, uh, this movie will be uh, remembered more than the winner as time goes on. You know? Sometimes you look back, and that's the truth on some of the Oscars. Um, like someone said, like for Best Picture and Director, like for instance, again, on Andy Hall, which won those awards. When people look back, people will talk about Star Wars a lot more than they ever will about Andy Hall. And people will think that Star Wars deserve the best picture, quite frankly, probably, later on if they haven't already. Um, well, I'm somebody that does, but then again, no, I admit I have a bias, but... I enjoy Star Wars, but I admit my bias. I, I'm not front about it, or some people aren't so much. Um, but, you know, so if Dunkirk doesn't win, but some other award or film that does, and then if I look at it, I might be like, I hope if it loses, it loses to a film that's good. And not because of some social and or political commentary or something of the sort. I hope it does well at the Academy Awards. Would it be sad if it does win big just because, well, it didn't really get much love at these other awards? Yeah, it would be sad, but hey, I mean, it's winning the big awards, which is a positive. Uh, but I think it, they deserve, it deserves it. I believe also Darkest Hour deserves a decent amount of Oscars. But Oldman seems to be a lock for the Academy Award. 
He's already won the Golden Globe, the BAFTA, the SAG, the Critics' Choice Award, so the Oscar seems to be the next choice. Um, but, you know, that's just me. Maybe you don't agree with what I've said. Me praising Dunkirk in Darkest Hour. But I wanted to make a video about that because those are the two films I loved last year. So, that's all I've got to say. Uh, I, you could say I ramble on. I kind of tend to do that. And I apologize. But, uh, hope you enjoyed this video anyway. Um, and yeah. Till next time. See you later.